welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at using your data book effectively. This video refers to the updated data book for 2021. Please be aware that some older videos may refer to different page numbers and different values than you will currently have in your data book. The first page we'll come across is the contents page. This is on page three. This page is useful for when you're trying to find specific information. The questions will no longer tell you that you may wish to use your data book but just be aware that you will want to use your data book for quite a number of questions within higher chemistry. For example, if you were doing a question which related to enthalpy, there are a number of different pages which might be useful for you. So if you aren't quite sure of what information you want or where to start, you could have a look at the pages that mention the topic that you're looking at and that might guide you to where you want to go with that question. On the next page, page four, we have relationships for higher and advanced higher chemistry because this data book is used for both levels. The relationships that you wish to use are above this red line here. So you only want to use these ones at the top, the ones below will be used in advanced higher. Some of these you've had from National 5, for example, EH equals CM delta T, percentage mass, N equals CV, N equals M over GFM, and the average rate calculation. But you do have a few that are new to you for this year. On page five, you have the alphabetical list of elements like you had in your National 5 data book with the relative atomic masses, which you can use to calculate gram formula mass. These are now more accurate than the ones you had in National 5. So you'll see that instead of being to 0 0.0 or 0.5, these are a more accurate decimal point. On page six, you have melting and boiling points of selected elements. So this periodic table does not have the two lines at the bottom and is very similar to the one that you would have had at National 5. You have the atomic number, the name of the element, the melting point in bold and the boiling point in italics. Just be aware that there are some symbols. So you've got this one here on beryllium, the little star, which says that this is only at 28 atmospheres. So that's an increased pressure. And then carbon has the little cross and then this says that it sublimes. That means that this goes from solid to gas without being a liquid. You can use this page to allow you to work out the state of an element at, a at certain temperatures. If you start at a solid and increase the temperature to the melting point, you will then get a liquid. If you continue to increase the temperature to the boiling point, then you will get a gas. If you're given a certain temperature, you need to consider is that below the melting point and therefore a solid, between the melting point and the boiling point and therefore a liquid, or above the boiling point and therefore a gas. On page seven, you have the covalent radii of selected elements. So here you have the main group elements without the noble gases as they don't form covalent molecules, uh, but you do have some of the transition metals here in the middle. Covalent radii is a measure of the atomic size. It is taken as half the distance of a covalent bond. So here we have the covalent radii for different elements and you can use this to help you when you're looking at trends. So going down a group, we can see that the covalent radii increases and going across a period, you can see the covalent radii decreases. You need to be able to explain those trends. So going down a group, you've got increased shielding and going across the period, you've got increased nuclear charge. Page eight is your main periodic table. This one combines all of the elements and unlike in National 5, this one shows you the electron arrangement for every element. So in each box, you have the atomic number at the top, you have the symbol, you have the electron arrangement and then the name at the bottom. So you have the electron arrangement for all of the elements rather than just the main groups. You've got the group numbers across the top, which you can use for helping you write formulae with your valency. But underneath, you also have these ones which are written in brackets. So these are the more accurate group numbers, which include the transition metals as well. You no longer have the stepped line on the periodic table. It's expected that you know where this is. So it goes underneath hydrogen across the top of the transition metals and then forms a staircase starting underneath boron. So everything that you have underneath and to the left here is a metal and everything above and to the right is a non-metal. Page nine used to be page eight in your National 5 data book. So you have your group ion table at the top, which can help you with formulae and they are still just written out as they were before in the columns with the different charges. And then you have your solubility table at the bottom. 
where you read across and down and then check with the key what sort of solubility it is. Page 10 is the melting points and boiling points of selected compounds. So here we have some selected oxides. You can see that there's quite a few which sublime. So we're seeing that word again, which means goes from solid to gas. And then you have some selected chlorides here as well. At the bottom, you've got your organic compounds, so the hydrocarbons. So you've got your alkanes in order here. You've got cycloalkanes, some of the alkenes here, alcohols, and then we're into carbonyls and carboxylic acids. Page 11 shows you the enthalpy of certain substances and bonds. So here we have the enthalpy of formation and the enthalpy of combustion of certain substances. The enthalpy of formation is the energy change when one mole of a substance is made from its elements in their standard states. So you can see that we only have enthalpy of formation for compounds, we don't have it for elements. Enthalpy of combustion is the energy released when one mole of a substance burns completely in oxygen. So you can have this for both elements and compounds. At the bottom, we have bond enthalpies. Here we have bond enthalpies for diatomic elements. This is the energy required to break the bond between the two atoms. Here we have mean bond enthalpies. This is the energy required to break the bond, which is shown here. But these are average values because each of these bonds can be found in different environments. At the bottom, we have the enthalpy of subl sublimation for carbon. So we said that carbon goes from solids to gas, and this is the energy required to make one mole of carbon sublime from solid to gas. On page 12, we have the ionization energies and electronegativities of selected elements. These are ordered into the periods. So you have period one here, period two, three, four, five, and six down at the bottom. So this can make it trickier to deal with because you are more used to seeing the periodic table in the groups and being able to scan through it that way or having them in alphabetical order. But this will allow you to have a look at some trends as well. So first of all, ionisation energy. This is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in the gaseous state. So the first ionisation energy is removing the first electron. The second ionisation energy is removing the second so you can see that as you go across a period, this value increases, and this is because of increasing nuclear charge. As you go down a group, so if you were to try and find a group, we can go for group one, so that'll be the first one of each of these. You can see that the value is decreasing, and that is because of increasing shielding. At the end here, we have the electronegativity scale. So electronegativity is a measure of the attraction of an atom for a bonding pair of electrons. And the higher the number, the greater the attraction. And again, you can look at the trends for this one. So going across a period, you can see that the value increases. This is because of increasing nuclear charge. Whereas going down a group, we can see that the value is decreasing. And again, this is because of increased shielding. On page 13, you have the electrochemical series. This is slightly expanded from what you are used to seeing in your National 5 data book, but it's laid out in the similar fashion. We just don't have the names of the elements written down the side this time. You will use this in the same way where you want to take two equations and combine them using the anti-clockwise rule. Page 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19 are all for advanced hire. However, you should be aware of their existence as they may be useful for problem solving questions. Page 20 has some physical constants that you need to be aware of, the main one being specific heat capacity of water, which you may need to use, and it also has some multiplication factors for scaling things up or down. I want you to use your data book to find the page and value for each of these. The first one we're looking for is the covalent radius of sulphur. So we find covalent radii on page 7, and the covalent radius for sulphur is 104. The melting point of beryllium chloride can be found on page 10 and is 405. The second ionisation energy of phosphorus you'll find on page 12 and is 1908. The reaction rate equation is on your relationships page on page 4 and is rate equals 1 over time. The electron arrangement of silicon you will find on page 8 and is 284. The relative atomic mass of strontium is on page 5 
and has a value of 87.6. Your mean bond enthalpy for a carbon to chlorine bond is on page 11 and has a value of 338. The state of iron at 2300 degrees requires you to use page 6 and to have a look at how this temperature relates to the melting and boiling point. This temperature is between the melting and boiling point and therefore this means iron will be a liquid at this temperature. The enthal standard enthalpy of formation of methanol is on page 11 and is negative 239. And the electronegativity of germanium you will find on page 12 and has a value of 2.0. Now let's have a look to see if you can identify what page of the databook would be useful for answering certain questions. Pause the video and have a think about which page you would use for this question. This question asks you about the first ionisation energy of fluorine, which means that you'll want to use page 12. Which page would you use for this question? This question is asking about the least attraction for bonding electrons, so this is to do with electronegativity, which is also on page 12. Which page would you use for this question? This question is looking for a reaction between bromine and something, but not iodine, and you've been given these ions. This relies on redox, which is the electrochemical series, which we'll find on page 13. Which page would you use for this question? This one specifically directs you to the databook and says using bond enthalpies. Bond enthalpies are on page 11. Finally, what page would you use for this question? For this question, you're trying to calculate percentage yield. If you don't know what equation you need to use for percentage yield, then you need to look at your relationships page on page four. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year and updates on new videos. Bye for now.